flower family, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and I love all things arch making. Lately, I've been focusing my time on creating heavy textured floral bouquet paintings using pastry bags and piping tips, just like the ones you see back here. Today, I'd like to show you how to create a mini hydrangea painting. If that sounds interesting to you, then let's get started. Here are some of the supplies that we'll be using for today's tutorial. I have a flower nail. This is a Tico 907, but any size flower nail will do. I have this sticky tack attached to the flower nail, and I like to use this because it makes it easier for the plastic sheets that I have to pipe my flowers on to adhere to. And when I'm done, I just pull off that plastic sheet and I store that away and wait for the flower to dry. When the flower dries, I just pop it off and then I can reuse these sheets. The plastic sheets that I use are called Duralar. This is a pad of 25 and a nine by 12, but they come in many sizes. I like to be able to cut them down to fit the different size flowers that I create. These are frosted and have a matte surface and I like using them because whenever I'm filming, there's no glare from the lights on the sheets, but that's just a personal preference. There are a variety of other items that you can pipe on, such as foil, parchment paper, Tupperware lids, plastic recyclable items. I prefer using this Duralar because I can customize it. I do reuse it and I find that it's very durable. To pipe the hydrangea, we'll be using a Wilton 103. I really love this piping tip because it's universal and you can create a lot of different flowers with just this piping tip. To create the poof or the bulk of the hydrangea, we'll be using a Wilton 2D. This is a great tip to create volume in your piece. The last piping tip that we'll be using today is a Tico 126K to create the leaves of the hydrangea. We will also be using a coupler, and these are very handy in switching out your piping tips. However, they're not necessary. Lastly, we'll be using some pastry bags or decorating bags. This is what we're going to put our paint inside of. I have seen some artists use Ziploc bags. I haven't personally tried that, but that's another option. Here are the paints that I'll be using today, but please feel free to use whatever you have at home. Hydrangeas come in so many beautiful colors, so you can't go wrong. For the main color of the flower, I'm going to be using cadmium yellow medium, ultramarine blue, and pyrrole orange. For the leaf of the hydrangea and a little bit of the center of the flower, I'm going to be using sap green, and Azo Red Deep. For today, I'll be mixing these paints into Gaffrey's Heavy Textured Titanium Buff. Now this is already pigmented. If you're working with a clear medium, then you'll need something like white to create a tint and make it a lighter color. Before we start mixing the paints, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how I prepare the pastry bags. I'm going to go ahead and use three bags here. For one of them, I'm going to go ahead and use the coupler. I place that towards the bottom of the bag and then I push that down just a little bit. I grab a pair of scissors or something and then I just score it very carefully. And then I push back a bit and then there should be an indention there that I can go ahead and cut off. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my 103 I want this to be in line with the seams. So the tips are in line with the seams of the bag. They do make larger size couplers, but I'm going to go ahead and just place the piping tips in the bags. We're now going to start mixing our paints. I'm going to begin with the heavy textured titanium buff, and then from there, we'll add the acrylic paint color of our choice to get the look that we want. So 
starting with the ultramarine blue, I have about this much on my palette knife. If I need to add more, then I'll just add more. I'm now going to add just a little bit of the cadmium yellow medium to the ultramarine blue. I wanted to mute the color just a little bit, but it looks like I've gone too far, so I'm going to add more ultramarine blue. I'm going to go ahead and put this in a Tupperware container while I mix my other paints, so this way it won't dry out. For the second color, I'm going to use ultramarine blue and just a little bit of the pyrrole orange. I'm adding just a little bit more. All right, I have both of my colors in my tub. As I'm looking at these, I like how this lavender color turned out. However, this bluish color over here with ultramarine is a little too muted for my taste. So I'm going to add more ultramarine blue. This is trial and error. As you can see, some of this is experimentation. So you're going through this with me just like I would be in my studio. I'm going to go ahead and add the ultramarine right in the tub. I'm happy with the way that this looks. I'm now going to mix the color for the leaves. For the leaves, I'm going to use sap green and a little bit of the Azo Red Deep. I'm going to put that in a Tupperware container to reserve for later. I will be leaving just a bit of the green for the middle of the flowers. I'm adding more titanium buff to this green that I've already mixed to make it lighter. I'm going to add that to the other side of my Tupperware container. The amount of flowers that you want to create will depend on the size of the canvas and the size of the hydrangea, as well as how many you want to create. For the mini hydrangea that we're doing today, my size canvas is a four by four, so I'll need maybe upwards to possibly 20 at the most. And this way, if there's any that don't turn out very well, I can always swap them out. Any extra flowers can be used for other pieces, other hydrangeas, or whatever you decide. I'm going to start with the 103 piping tip. That's going to be our main flower. And I'm going to go ahead and start applying those paints inside the pastry bag. Since we're creating a mini hydrangea, I anticipate that we don't need as many flowers, so we won't need as much paint. I'm going to fold the bag down. I have just a leftover cup that I don't use to drink with, and it's easy to put my pastry bag in here and hold it while I'm applying the paint. I'm going to be alternating the paint colors inside the pastry bag, the lavender, the blue, and the titanium buff. To make it easier, I'm just going to pipe this inside the Tupperware container. I forgot before we do that, I'm going to add a little bit of this lighter green inside one of the seams, which is going to be the middle part of the flower. Taking a smaller palette knife, I'm going to scoop up some of that light green. At the larger opening of the piping tip, I'm going to align green along the seam. For demonstration purposes, I think I'm going to leave it outside of this cup so you can see me place the colors inside the bag. And I'm just going to start alternating colors. I really don't have a specific method. I'm just scooping up some of the titanium in the purple or some of the titanium 
and the blue or maybe some of the purple in the blue and I'm just placing that inside the pastry bag. This is plenty and enough for us to create the flowers for the mini hydrangea. I'm using my squeegee and placing the paint closer to the opening of the piping tip. Off to the side, I have a container of water in between piping flowers. I like to place the tip inside that water. This way the paint doesn't dry around the piping tip. I have a couple of Duralar sheets that I've already pre-cut, so they're ready to go. When piping four petal flowers, I really like to utilize the corner of the Duralar or the plastic film that I'm using, twisting the bag to keep everything tight. I'm going to get started by piping just a little bit where I want those flowers to go. So I think always heading to those corners. And I'm holding my bag down at a 45. The wide end is towards the center and the skinnier pointed end is towards the outside. When I squeeze on the bag, I'm going to rotate the nail so I try to think about putting that wide end down at the center. I squeeze, I rotate, and then I pull back just a little bit, and that creates a petal. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, towards the center, squeeze, rotate, pull towards the center. Use the thick end or the wide end towards the middle, squeeze, rotate, down towards the center. You can kind of adjust that a little bit. And then same thing towards the center, at an angle, squeeze, rotate towards the center and pull up. Sometimes the flowers don't turn out the way you want. So that's why I love having this Tupperware container because I can always scrape the flower that I don't like back inside that container. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> I tried to shoot for the center as best as possible. This is not necessary, but just kind of a guide to help me. I'm angling the piping tip down, and I like to think about starting in the middle of those two lines and then rotating to the center of the next two lines. So this is slightly angled, starting in the center of these two lines, rotate, 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 the center of the next two lines and pull slightly down. Okay, let's give it a try. Okay, that is one petal. Start the same way, squeeze the center, start in the middle, squeeze to the center, start in the middle, Squeeze, slightly lift up and pull towards the middle and pull around. That is one way to pipe a flower for a hydrangea. I'm gonna place this in here to hold. I like to collect certain things that I think that might be useful. Sometimes if I'm working with something, I like to use this to stick inside to hold the flower in place. If you're happy with your flower, then you can pull this off the flower nail and continue piping more. I'm happy with this. I'm going to take this off and let it dry. I'm going to continue piping flowers for the hydrangea. I'm going to see if I can get some different angles. This way you can see things more clearly. The flowers are off drying to the side. I have the desired amount that I want for the hydrangea. And now I'm going to start preparing the pastry bag for the leaves. Here's the piping tip. It has a really nice curve to it. We're going to place the darker color along this tip and the inside seam of the bag, and then the lighter color would fill up the rest of the bag. I'm gonna try my best to fill in more green than I did last time for my flowers. So this time it will show.
I'm piping on a three by three sheet of mylar because I do want those petals to be larger. When piping the leaves, I want this point to be on the outside and I want this to be in the middle or the center of the leaf. This green will be on the inside of our leaves. I'm going to place my piping bag at a slight angle and this pointed end will be drawing almost a triangle. So I'll be piping along and I'll turn my piping tip slightly up. I'll form a point and then what I'm going to do is rotate my sheet and my flower nail and then I'm going to make sure this goes along the seam and back or towards the center. So again, facing the piping tip towards the bottom, I'm going to pipe up and kind of ruffle those edges. I'm going to turn my piping bag and tip up to make a point. So it's gonna be at a steeper angle. And then as I come back down, this darker end will fill in that seam and then come back down. So let's try that together. That pointed end is out, squeezing and releasing, coming up, ruffling up, lifting up, make that point, rotate my nail and come in towards the seam and down. My goal is to close in that seam as best as I can so there's no gaps. I'm going to point my piping tip down a bit to see if that gives the leaf a different look. It makes the leaf look a little wider. So up, 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 kind of shaking the piping bag rotate and point up the tip and then rotate the flower nail and came back down closing that seam. So here are the two different looks. One where the piping bag tip is facing down and then I kind of draw that up. I rotate it and then the flower nail rotates and I come back down this way. And then this angle where I start at an angle, so I'm not here. I'm starting and rotating my angle here. I go up, 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 rotate down, all the way and close. So those are two different ones that you can try if you like a more slightly flatter and angled or more of a steeper angle. In this version, we will have the piping tip opening facing down this is going to be at a slight angle. Going to ruffle those edges. Going to rotate and lift up at a point. Rotate my flower nail and then come down closing that seam. I'm going to create this leaf very similarly to the one we just did. However, the opening of the piping tip is going to face downward at an angle towards the bottom left corner. It does take practice. As you can see, my piping tip did a great job with staying at this angle, but as I turned, I kind of curved it around. So working on trying to stay at this angle, but slightly curving the tip upwards and then doing that same thing coming down so it looks more symmetrical. When I'm creating my leaves, I try to think about this tip and this opening creating two separate lines. This tip is on the outside creating the outside shape and then the center is creating the middle of the leaf. I try my best to overlap the seam as much as possible because there will be some shrinkage happening with anything that we create with this material. If you see some of these lines like you do over here happening when you are piping, 
there could be something stuck in your paint or there might be some dry pieces on the edge of your piping tip. If you just leave that in some water and clean that off, that should take care of any of those marks. Creating leaves with a petal piping tip can be challenging, so hopefully you found some tips. I myself still struggle creating leaves like this. You can go with that approach, or they do make specific piping tips to create leaves similar to these down here. Though they won't be the same shape as a hydrangea leaf, this is another option. Now that we have finished creating the flower and the leaves for our hydrangea and we're letting them dry, we're going to start preparing the canvas. Because the leaves and the flowers are not very thick, they shouldn't take long to dry. Typically within a few hours to dry to the touch. However, I like to wait a day or more just to make sure it's dried completely through. For today's surface, I'm going to use these Da Vinci Pro panels. I really like these Pro panels. I like the wooden surface and I like the durability. To prepare this type of surface, I like to use Golden's GAC 100 to seal it. And I like to do that on the top, the sides, and the inside of the panel. Once I'm done sealing it, I'll usually do about two coats. I will go ahead and then add a clear gesso coat on top and I'll do two coats of the gesso as well. If you are someone that wants to go with a pre-gesso canvas, I know that some artists will sand them and clean off any residue and then to prime it again with a gesso of their choice. Now that the flowers and the leaves have dried and our surface has been prepped, we can start assembling the hydrangea. I'm going to grab the 2D piping tip, the pastry bag, and the leftover paints that we previously used. This will be the bulk or the volume of our hydrangea. To fill our pastry bag, I'm going to start with the main color. Then I'm going to leave a little bit of space in the center and fill that in with our green. I left some space in the center and I'm going to fill that in with the green. I just wanted to mention that off camera, I put some of the leftover paint in an empty pastry bag and I'll use this to pipe the center of the hydrangea. I'll take some scissors and cut just a little bit off of the end. You can choose this method or a round piping tip. This is a Tico number two. I've selected some flowers and leaves and my favorite part is hearing the sound of them being peeled off of that plastic sheet. Once I've peeled off some of the flowers and the leaves, I'll start applying them to the surface, playing around with the composition. Once I have a little bit of an idea of where I want the leaves to go, I'll start using the paint that's in that 2D pastry bag, and I'll start piping the main bulk or the volume of the hydrangea. I want to make sure that I have a clean tip when I start, and I typically like to start in the middle of the surface. I start selecting flowers and placing them along the outside of the poof. I like using the clear gaffrey medium to adhere my leaves, but you could also just use the paint we just used. I usually just take a clean brush and some water to clean up any of that extra medium. This will shrink a bit when it dries, so I'm going to reserve a little bit of the paint. This way I can fill any gaps if I need to. Using some of this paint, I'm going to pipe the center of these flowers.
I'm going to put this painting aside and check back later in about a day or two. Since the leaves and the flowers are completely dry, this shouldn't take very long. We're just waiting for the center of the flower or the poof to completely dry. Here's a look of the completed piece. It is fully dried. It's been about a day or two, and I did use a fan to help speed up the drying process. Since the flowers and the leaves had dried previously, the only thing that we were waiting for was the paint used to create the bulk of the hydrangea. It did shrink slightly, but not too much. Here's a look of the painting on its side where it still has that nice dome shape. If you have any questions or suggestions on our next tutorial, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and inspired you to create your own heavy textured hydrangea painting. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more creative content. Your support really helps the channel grow. Until next time, have fun exploring and let your creativity bloom.